wisdom and insight for worship leaders and music teams all around the world. For more details, email thewell at planetshakers.com. Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Well. Welcome! <laughs> so exciting. Andy, welcome. are you excited? I am so excited to be here. We are so excited today because this is the first ever video uh, podcast that we are releasing mm-hmm. to the world, normally on audio, but we're releasing it on video. Wow. And, uh, you know, we have just uh, got a whole new fresh mm. season of The Well episodes coming your way. Yeah. Now, you might notice that BJ looks slightly different today, and hey. that's because BJ is a little bit unwell, so we're praying for his healing. Yes, but yeah. Andy has graciously stepped in and he's going to offer some wisdom and insights on how to do good hairstyles later. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, so we're just excited to be back like always, we want to point you to Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, which is the well underscore PS, yeah. and also the Facebook page, which is the well dash planet mm-hmm. shakers. And if you have any questions, because we love answering questions, don't we, guys? Love it. We just love, love it. Love it. We go to bed at night, we wake up in the morning wanting to answer questions. That's what we think about. No, it's what, we, right. it's what we do with our lives. And so we would love to hear from you. Write to the well at planetshakers.com. Anything you want to know about anything regarding um, the music team, Andy's hair. Uh, the type of cologne that he wears. Um, you know, just all bits and pieces like that is, is really great. Well, guys, let's talk about our last weekend at church. Mm-hmm. Last Debrief. Weekend. Come last on. Last weekend at church. That was a great weekend at church. Amazing. Uh, you, were playing, you were playing the drum kit? I was hitting drums. <laughs> yeah, I was... Uh, <laughs> I was playing the guitar and singing, and Pastor Sam, you weren't actually doing singing, you were doing the preaching. No, I was, and that's why my voice sounds like a man. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't going to (laughs) say. But we had a great weekend. We taught a new song. And mm. uh, by one of our legends in the team, Mitchell. Mm, amazing. And uh, it was a great new, fresh song because there's nothing like a new song. Mm. Keeps the uh, keeps the people excited. <laughs> keeps God excited. God likes new songs. He loves them. And so keep writing new songs for all you songwriters out there. Mm. Uh, but look, 9.30 service, we've talked about it before. No, sorry, 9 o'clock service in the morning can sometimes be a bit slow to get people into it because mm. it's morning, people are waking up. But I didn't feel like that. I felt like no um, right from that praise song, in, 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 even though we'd introduced a new worship song, people were really engaged and really getting into it really well. And so, you know, I think people knowing the song helps too. The band came prepared. Yep. And they got probably three days preparation time as opposed to one day preparation time learning the song. Yep. Just so kind. To yeah. give them that preparation. Yeah, well, it f- felt to be gracious. Mm. Yes. Mm. And it was freezing too, so. Oh, it really was. Yeah. Freezing morning. Yep. And I thought it was great. But I think what happens too is that, um, you know, lots of prayer goes into a Sunday. So I know I was praying heaps. I don't know about you guys, whether yes. you were preparing. And, and that always makes a difference in the atmosphere when yeah. you, you're just spiritually prepared. You've already sown in prayer. and. And the atmosphere's already open, ready for God to move. <laughs> Absolutely. Andy, on the weekend you preached about the bulking season. Explain what that ah, is. Man. I did. Our youth ministry on Friday night, uh, we just said we're going through a, a growth spurt and when you go through a growth spurt, you've got to eat more. Mm-hmm. So we talked about getting into the Word of God more and, uh, and just filling yourself up, feeding your spirit rather than feeding your flesh. And, uh, and that's been awesome for our, our young people really getting, um, getting into the Word of God, reading the Bible. So that's been happening. Awesome. It's good to see on social media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like on every episode, we love to share with you something that God has put on our heart. And it would be the best possible scenario if Pastor Sam started this week. So, uh, Pastor Sam, why don't you share yes. from the heart? Let me share from my heart. This is something God's laid on my heart and I'd love to read from Genesis chapter 15, I believe. And uh, it's the situation where Hagar, she has um, gone through a really hard time. She's feeling very distressed and she's run away from Sarai um, because Sarai has been giving her such a hard time. But, you know, she finds herself in the wilderness um, and she has an encounter with God and in her most... Uh, a distraught situation where her heart is aching. She doesn't know what to do, what happens. The angel of the Lord finds her. Jesus finds her in her mess, in her trouble. And what happens, she has this encounter and then she names this particular area that she's in, this well that she's in. And, And it says this in verse 13. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said, 
Have I not even here in the wilderness looked upon him who sees me and lived? Or have I here also seen the future purposes or designs of him who sees me? And what is... God laid on my heart. God sees us. Mm. God knows us. He sees what we go through. He sees the troubles. He sees the difficulties. Um, He's he's so aware of our um, struggles. Mm. And yet he seeks us out, Mm. just like he did Hagar. He ran after her and appeared to her. And so she has an encounter with God. And whenever we um, go through hard times, we can feel so isolated and and feel like no one understands and um, no one sees what I'm going through, but God sees what you're going through. And so you should never feel alone. You should never feel abandoned. Mm. Um, You should never feel isolated, but realize that in those moments of trauma and trial, God is there for you. And he's there to show you about your future. Mm. He's there to give you a word to bring you through the hard times. And so we see Hagar, she, she understands this about God and has that wonderful encounter. So right now, whatever you're going through, if you're going through a hard time, know that you're not alone. God is with you and God has a word for you and he wants to speak to you and encourage you and speak to you about your future. So I really want to encourage you today. God loves you and he's got an amazing future for you. So don't despair and um, just let God minister to you today. So that's it. Awesome. So this week on The Well, the topic is the culture of the music team. And this is such an important part of uh, what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, the culture um, the culture dictates everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the culture determines the songs you write, uh, how you yeah. serve, your attitude, how you praise and worship. Mm-hmm. Um, and us as a music team, we actually set the culture yeah. of praise and worship in the church. Yeah. That's an honour and it's also a massive responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the the missionary, um, not the musician. Yes, the musicianary. <clears throat> the musicianary statement we've come up with, which you might not have heard that term before, musicianary, but it's basically a missionary that is a musician. Musicianaries, that's what we are. We come up with a statement for our worship team. We are musicianaries, powerful Men and women of God that play skillfully unto the Lord, because you've got to do that. Mm-hmm. You've got to play skillful. Yeah. Uh, worshipping the Lord in spirit and in truth, you've got to do that as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is all biblical. Uh, with a heart of unity, we serve the church locally and around the world with our gifts. We exist yes. to usher a body, the body, sorry, into a corporate and personal encounter with the living God. Yes. And that's awesome. And you should declare that over your own life and your own music team. Yeah. Um, but that kind of sums up what we do as a music team. That's we, right. We don't just want to get out there and play music skillfully, but it all comes hand in hand. We want to get up and give our best in the natural with our gifts, but also worshipping in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. And the culture of um, a musicianary, it's not to be dictated by what everyone's going through in the congregation. That's right. But, yeah, as a, as, as a music person, whatever that gift is, as you um, give it to the Lord and as you honour Him, what you're doing is you're releasing God through you. So mm. that's the thing that's going to change the atmosphere. That's going to thing be the thing that, that opens up the heavens in the congregation when you're worshipping. If you realise that, that God wants to use your gifts, He wants to flow through you and Mm. not to sit back and go, oh, the people don't want to get into it today. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, they're too tired or Mm -hmm. whatever. No, we're the ones that are allowing God to flow through us and therefore changing the culture, changing the atmosphere and having such an impact upon people no matter what they're going through. I mean, we could bring the change, right? We could bring the encounter because we're just ushering God into a place. Totally. Yeah, and that I think that is the emphasis of the word missionary in there. A missionary would go somewhere that they're not necessarily familiar and and bring the culture of the kingdom to that place. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's why, you know, we see ourselves as musicians, but missionaries, even if it is to our own church, that we're bringing the culture not just to where it where it is right now, but bringing the culture of the kingdom to that place. Totally. Yeah, we, first and foremost, we want to be powerful men and women of God yeah. that happen to play music, that happen yeah. to sing, and, you know, so, and doing it, with great skill as well. The Bible says play skillfully into the Lord. Mm. And so, you know, God wants to move through our music. He wants to move in our worship. And, you know, God isn't, um, he can do whatever he wants, but Mm. if we provide ourselves as a vessel with the abilities to go anywhere musically, it can, you know, create these moments that are amazing in worship. 
And so an encouragement to everyone out there, you know, practice and, um, and get good on your instrument because it'll enable you to, to move in the flow in the spirit with yeah. confidence. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the whole thing about being a missionary is you, you go, into, like Andy said, you go into a place and sometimes you do things that you don't want to do, but, you, you know, it, it's not always enjoyable, but you go in there with a heart of servanthood and yeah. you're like, I'm just going to do whatever needs to be done to yeah. see a culture change or to yeah. see the kingdom of God established. Yeah. And that's what we do as a music team. We're not just a bunch of rock stars who get up on stage and play, but we'll do whatever needs to be done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we will clean the carpet. We will we will vacuum the carpet if we can find a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yes. If we can't find a vacuum cleaner, we'll get a little brush and some plastic lid that's and it. we will clean that floor. And, you know, yeah. if, if you, if, for those of you aren't, who aren't a part of Planet Shakers, if you came and spent some time with our team, you would um, notice that with, with every one of these Definitely. guys, they will do whatever needs to be done. Yeah. They'll, yeah. They'll, they'll clean up side of stage. They will roll cables at the end. Whatever is required um, is, is what we like to, you know, develop in the culture of our team. Yes. Yeah. And I think also people need to realise that, you know, they might look at us as Planet Shakers and think this is how Planet Shakers does worship. Mm. No, this is what the Bible says right. about right. worship. It says about clapping your hands, raising your hands, dancing before the Lord, mm-hmm. playing skillfully, yes. all of these things that are part of our praise and worship, they're all in the Word of God. Mm. And so we've made a decision that we are going to give God the praise and worship that He wants, mm. not what our current culture says, That's right, yeah. not what, um, you know, the, the latest trend says on how to worship God, yes. but he's lined it out in the word of God. This is how I like to be worshipped. And so we've gone, okay, if that's what you want, that's what we're giving you, yeah. not dependent upon yeah. how we're feeling at yeah. the time, yeah. whether, you know, we're in a good mood or a bad mood or whether things are going right. God says, this is how I want you to do it. I want there to be praise continually in yes. your mouth, you know, to rejoice and and again, I say rejoice, mm-hmm. you know, um, no good coming in and going, oh, I don't feel like it today. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, God, yes, praise you. No, what does the Bible say? How does God want to be worshipped? Mm-hmm. And that's where Planet Shakers yeah. praise and worship has come out of the Bible, the Word of God. And we've tried to reflect that uh, <clears throat> in, our, you know, our best attempts about mm-hmm. what worship should look like. It's not just Planet Shakers, no, it's the Bible. it's biblical. Mm-hmm. And one of the important parts of our missionary statement, it says with a heart of unity. Yeah. And unity is just so important for yeah. a team to function together. I mean, the Bible talks about the, the body being united and how can this arm um, or whatever go that way and yeah. that leg, my head went that way, my leg went that way. It doesn't work. Um, so yeah. only people in Australia would understand <laughs> that because that was an Australian ad on mm. TV. Um, but it is so important for unity. If, if, if the worship leader says, come on, let's do this, the whole team has got to go with what the worship leader is doing because yeah. disunity is going to, well, look, the Bible says where there is unity, God commands a blessing. Yeah. So if there's disunity, what? there's no blessing. That's right. Possibly the opposite. And yeah. so, you know, we want to be blessed. We want our worship times to be so blessed, yeah. full of healings, full of miracles, yeah. full of amazing moves of God. And in order to see that happen, we need to be unified mm-hmm. in the direction that we're going and, and totally getting behind the pastors of the church. Yeah. 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 And I think as well, the culture always comes from, you know, your identity as a team as well. And, and that's mm-hmm. where this mus- musicianary statement comes in as well, is mm. this is who we identify ourselves to be. Yes. Yeah. You said before, you, we don't see ourselves as musicians first. We see ourselves as men and women of God or yeah. Yeah. planet shaking worshippers is yes. who we see ourselves as. We just happen to play music with that. That's right. And that's what dictates the culture. Yeah. You know, so I think we would in, we would want to encourage you as well is how do you see yourself? What's your identity mm. as you, you know, is it, as, well, I'm a drummer, this is what I do. No, are, are you a worshipper? Are you a man of God? And are you drumming out of that? Because the result will be so different. Yeah. So different. <clears throat> Excuse me. So different. So different. So great, great, different. great combo, guys. Yes. We've got a new segment that we're going to introduce to you on the well Good called idea. BTS. <laughs> behind the scenes. And each week we want to show you a bit of what happens behind the scenes. Yeah. So, you know, today, um, this morning, rather, we uh, we did a bit of a combined worship meeting with our staff. Yes. Yes. And normally we pray every every Tuesday morning as a staff, but today we had almost like a bit of a chapel service. We had all the college students come in, and so we all joined together and we had some praise and worship. So we're going to show you a bit of behind the scenes and show um, you what happened this morning. Here I am in the studio, it's the morning, we're about to go play. I've got my guitars to choose from here. But we're doing an acoustic set today. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a great morning. 
Yeah. We're doing a uh, just a worship set for for the uh, college open day slash staff premium. And look, Rudy's here. He's gonna lead praise. Then he's gonna get up and play keyboard for worship. Because that's kind of like servant Rudy is. He just he does whatever's needed. This hasn't been done for minutes. 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 Maybe even hours. This is Terence here. Amazing, um, amazing production man, servant. Also makes a mean coffee. Mean yeah. in a good way. He's a man, so yeah. Are you doing amazing. monitors or front of house? Uh, front of house. Hello, Chelsea. Hello. 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 Alright, throw a couple of shrimp on the barbie. I'm actually, um, setting up some drums. Pop me, uh, pedal on. Uh, don't look at these heads, they're a bit old. Due for replacing. I said don't. We have a, a Yamaha Live Custom, which is oak. So if you haven't seen it, this is our church, everybody, in Melbourne campus. Blocked off, there's more room out the back behind those kids. Love you, it's morning time, remember, and it's cold. Chelsea, you on your warm ups? Be lifted up. You know, we really believe in the excellence of Planet Shakers. Yeah. We threw this in a jiffy. Mm -hmm. uh, 9-11, oh, um, which is funny enough when our album gets released in America, so stay tuned for that. Well, we're all around the world actually, September 11th. Um, it's time for coffee, so I'm going to get a coffee. <coughs> okay. Alright. Alright. So as you can see here today we have the college students, and it's our, all our staff are coming. They're still coming. Uh, it's not good to be late. No. We've got to be on time. I'll hold. No, we just going to go for it. Doesn't matter how many people are in the, in the venue, we're gonna give it up, give it everything. Steve. It was a lovely morning, wonderful word. And Rudy well. did a great job on the keyboard. Multi talented, very multi talented. Can you preach? Hold on. You should see him shoot a three. I was, uh, I don't want to be inappropriate, but you know, I was, I was hanging on by this seat of my pants. He was. I was hanging on by the seat of my pants. But the seam was strong. Oh. It was, the seam was seamless. <laughs> oh. Whoop. Well, we hope you enjoy those behind the scenes. Um, did you guys like it? They were great. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, starring yours truly and uh, yeah, Andy and Pastor Sam. Yeah. Um, anyways, we're going to move on to the questions now. Good idea. Uh, because we have had, we've got some questions here. The first one is from Andreas, who is from Jakarta, Andreas. Indonesia. We will be there shortly, and we're very excited to be in Indonesia. His question is, how do musicians keep focus on God when they're playing an instrument, just like singers keep focus on God when they're singing? I think it means obviously on, it, it is easier to focus on God when you're singing because singing is not that hard really. Singers don't do anything. I think that's what he's saying. No, they just stand there and they say, no. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> no, Andy, you, you're obviously a drummer and drummers probably have one of the most, oh. you know, seemingly pressured positions, Absolutely. keeping There's it all together. To do. Lots to do. Tell us how you do that. I think the better you know your instrument, the less you have to concentrate on it. That's true. That would yes. be the start. So the more you practice to get the basics right, the less you have to think about it whilst you're doing it. And I would say that, yeah, we don't want to be thinking about too much about what we're doing so that you can focus on God and on the worship leader and where they're leading. So that's probably the simple advice. I think that's a great answer. Anything mm. you'd like to add to that, Pastor Sam? No, but what about you? You're a musician. Well, you? I, would, I would say the exact same thing as Andy. Be so practised up at home that when you come on stage on a Sunday or whatever day, um, you're not all focused on what you're doing, but you're focused on mm. God. It enables you, it releases you. Yep, and I, I pray, sorry, I pray as I go as well. I mean, I, yeah. there's yeah. plenty of times, show Holy Spirit, way. what do we want to play next? Holy Spirit, what are you doing right now? Can you show me, not just the worship leader, so that I'm on the same page as them? Great, so great advice. Next question is from Ricardo. And Ricardo, I believe, is from Florida. 
Because at the end of his email, he said, come back to Florida. Okay. So you'd assume that he's from Florida. You would assume. No, you, yes. one would assume that. And he said, uh, I was wondering if you guys have any suggestions on how to use loops. We have Ableton, but we almost never use it. Do you guys use loops and click? Well, Andy, because you know, you're the drummer, you run that. So why don't you answer that for him? Yes, uh, we have been using Ableton, haven't we? We have. Um, but we also use a bit of a simpler version just on iPad uh, for ch uh, church services and different services. Which is called? Uh, it is called SoundCube, just an app on our iPad or iPhone. And yeah. we just have, you know, the set tracks there. Uh, the only limitation is it has a set form. Um, and so we sometimes have to stop the tracks, but it is a very simple way of doing it. Yeah, Ableton is a great program and it's a bit more, well, a lot more involved, but it gives you the ability to change the tempo, change the key, go up and down according to the worship leader's range. Um, and yeah, you have so many more options with Ableton. You can even send out signals to control the words and video, and it's a great thing to do. We use a lot of tracks and loops for a lot of our songs because that's part of our sound. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to use them for your sound, but if you're doing our songs, then you can download them um, on, a, on a website called multitracks.com, and so you can get all of our songs and play along to them so you sound sounds like Planet Shakers. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other bands do that too. So why don't you check that out? Yeah, Next. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're but cool. Surely, um, learning to play with tracks and and having this part of your music also gives such a full sound. It does. And that's um, really great. Uh, if if uh, you you're light on in a band or mm. whatever, you can have these tracks <coughs> playing, and for the congregation, it just gives them a great experience. So I'd encourage someone to, mm -hmm. you know, Invest in really it. start to yeah. look into using them because of the skill also that you know you can. Yeah, you know that's right. Don't and and what I was talking <laughs> multi tracks when you buy it, you get all the different stems. So if you don't have a bass player in your surface, service, yeah. um, you can just play that stem, just that bass track. Yeah. So yeah, that it's, well. it's it great. It helps with all the limitations. It does. It's great. Technology is is made a way for these sort of things, which mm -hmm. is great. Next question is from Eric Perez, and his question is: How do you manage too many people in a worship team? Have you had any problems with the band inside? Mm -hmm. Have we? How do we manage? No, because we're perfect. Next question. <laughs> no, no, we do We do have, you know, every person has problems, just like a family. You know, family are great, they love each other, but they still have issues they've got to work through and they have fights sometimes. Not that we have fights. No, we Sometimes we bash fights. each other up. No fights. But, um, we do have wrestles. <laughs> the, one of the best things you can do <laughs> is, have, is have a wrestle. One of the best things you can do is constantly be... Uh, working on people's hearts and keeping our hearts in the right place because everything flows from the heart. Yeah. And so we're always doing things like discipleships, getting all the team together and, you know, casting the vision and, and this is the direction we're going, come on, let's all, you know, and worship, being just being in the presence of God, he works on you. He works yeah. on your heart and yep. yeah. and allowing him to do that keeps everyone in a good place and, and helps us not run into as many issues. Yep. Yes. And managing a big team, though, we've had to adopt or adapt as we go, as yes. the team keeps growing. So technology has definitely helped with that. Yep. So emailing out things, obviously, out. that's a start. Communication going out, everybody knows they need to check their emails, yep. getting yep. Uh, demos to learn online and things like that, but also um, planning. Planning center. Planning center. Yes. Yeah, that has worked. Planning centers, yeah, just has taken us to a whole new level as well. Us. Yeah, help keep us organized. If you don't know that, you should check it out. Most mm -hmm. churches use that to communicate to their teams and rostering, all that kind of stuff. But we did have a mess up just the other week. Did we? Yes. What happened? Well, there was one keyboard player on and then another keyboard player thought they were on and they rocked up to rest. So they had a wrestle to sort it out. No. <laughs> no. That would have been fun though. Mm. But yes, yeah, so this is where, you know, in those kind of situations, your heart could be tested about what have you, yeah. what's your motive, yep. whether I want to be in that position or and so um, the keyboard player who you know rocked up ready for the afternoon services was very very gracious mm. and he said oh no problem no worries and just didn't make a fuss and yeah. and, and again that helps to preserve unity because That's right. no one's going hey I meant to be rostered on and who messed up this roster? It was nothing like that. And so, you know, the fruits <clears throat> of the spirit are very important in a large team. Very, especially the apple and the banana. Right. And the grapes. They're the only three fruits I like. So, guys, I've got right. another question. Joel Chinta. Yes. <laughs> I knew it. How did you know? No, I just had a So feeling. we've got a question here from Joel Chinta who says, what's the secret to high singing, to singing high notes and lines like Joth and BJ? 
Maybe we should wait for BGO to come and answer that. Oh, you tell no, me. Look, no, it, you, you know. You can expand your range, but your your general voice range is something you're born with. Mm. Some people have really low voices like, I don't do. Mm, very low. <laughs> and some people have high voices like, <laughs> um, I've got a particular high, particularly high, higher voice for a bloke mm. or a guy. Um, but, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> mm. but in saying that, you can expand your range. So... Um, you know, I've definitely expanded my range as I grew older. I mean, as a little kid, obviously, you can scream real high, but then as you go through puberty, your voice drops. Uh, but then it's the aim of getting it back mm. up to that higher range again, which Andy's having a bit of trouble with. Mm. Aren't you, Andy? <laughs> yes. But there's, there's some great teaching out there, um, you know, singing techniques that you can learn to expand your range. Um, but, you know, Google it. Check out Brett Manning. He's, a, he's, he's on a, someone I know who can help you do that, expand ranges. Um, but... Uh, some of it surely, Joss, is confidence, though. No, that's that's true. Yeah. Yeah, because confidence comes out and you're singing like crazy. If you're not confident, mm. you're not you're not going to sound good, really. Mm. Um, and people don't respond very well to inconfidence. Is it inconfidence? Yes. Yeah. And so you, when you're singing, especially if you're worshiping, you need to be confident with what you're singing out. Yeah. You know, whether you think you're the greatest singer in the world or not, no, still be confident yes. and deliver uh, what you need to deliver. And then if you can reach something falsetto, then you can work at um, developing that sound and making it louder. That's strength, so, yeah. Is that true? Um, yeah. Is that right? I'm learning sure. things right here. Is that sure. right? Taking notes. And so to be able to blend your chest voice and your falsetto voice, you just got to work at it and do exercises that help expand that range. But also there are ways in which <clears> it <throat> might seem or come across stronger than it actually is. That's right. So. Yeah, there is different techniques of using different frequencies in your voice to make it seem louder and bigger, yes. but you're not actually smashing your voice. Mm. And so and that's something I'm still trying to learn. Rather than just smashing your voice in praise, you can still make it sound like that, but not actually be using all the energy in your throat. Yes. Um, so there's different techniques out there that you should check out. Um, but it's like an athlete, you know, if you if you stretch and you keep stretching, you end up becoming more flexible. Yeah. So it's just doing that for your throat and your vocal cords. Yeah. Well, guys, if you have more questions, email thewell at planetshakers.com. We'd love to answer them for you. Well, before we go, we'd like to give people one line of advice going into the following weekend. So, Andy, why don't you give the drummers a piece of advice? Mm -hmm. Pastor Sam, you give the worship leaders a piece of advice, and I'll give the guitarist keyboardists advice. Absolutely. I'll give... Two pieces, if I may. One is for you drummers to uh, not see ourselves as drummers firstly, but see ourselves as worshippers secondly, yeah. drummers. And the second piece of advice is why don't we hone in on our skills and skill ourselves up to a level where we don't have to focus on our drummings in our Sunday services. Great. Good advice. Okay, to all our worship leaders out there, could I encourage you to pray? Can you prepare mm. yourself before the Lord, before you get up onto a platform and to spend some time personally with God? Let him take you somewhere that you can then take others. And so be encouraged. Get before God. Awesome. Pray, pray, pray. Yes, that's great. I would love to encourage all the guitarists and keyboard players, any other musicians for that matter, bass players, if they count as a musician. They, know they do, don't they? It's just the drummers that don't. Um, no, I would love to encourage you to learn, if you can, find out what songs you're doing on the weekend and learn them off by heart. Learn all the parts off by heart. You may come from a church where you still use sheet music. Try to try to get rid of that because that can be a, a something that stops you from getting into it more. So try to learn everything off by heart and that will help enable you to... Uh, just to do what God has called you to do on the stage. Now, before we finish, we're going to finish with a musicianary statement again. I hope you like how fast I'm talking. Very fast. <laughs> we, I just had a coffee before we started filming. Can you tell? Yep. Okay, so the musicianary statement is, we are musicianaries, powerful men and women of God that play skillfully into the Lord, worshipping in spirit and in truth. With a heart of unity, we serve the church locally and around the world with our gifts. We exist to usher the body into a corporate and personal encounter with the living God. So that's our prayer for everybody out there this coming weekend. Let's go for it, hey? Absolutely. Yes. Amen. All right. Amen. See you Have a good time. week. Bye. <laughs>